Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, March 18. Government is continuing the process of fiscal consolidation to ensure that Jamaica stays on track with the plan to reduce the national debt. Finance Minister Dr. Peter Phillips has announced that by the end of this fiscal year, Jamaica's debt-to-GDP ratio will come down from 147 to 139 percent. The goal is to have a debt-to-GDP ratio of between 95 and 100 percent by 2020 and 60 percent by fiscal year 2025-26. High levels of debt eliminate a capital budget which is essential for growth. High levels of debt become a deterrent to investment, both domestic and foreign. Dr. Phillips was speaking at a recent breakfast forum hosted by the Jamaica Exporters Association. Legislation to enable the adoption of fiscal rules is expected to be passed this month and will allow Parliament to better manage the country's financial affairs and promote transparency. Seven special education institutions will be better able to cater to the needs of their students through the acquisition of computer-related equipment. This follows the signing of a contract between the eLearning Jamaica Company Limited and the Center for Disability Studies at the University of the West Indies, UWI Mona. Under the contract, the UWI's Center for Disability Studies will buy and distribute the equipment to the schools. Funding will come from eLearning Jamaica. This contract will, is valued at about 33 million Jamaican dollars all geared towards providing equipment and special facilities for those of our community who are disabled. The contract will facilitate training as well as the purchasing of braille machines, videos and software for the blind and the deaf. Learning institutions such as the Salvation Army School for the Blind and the Danny Williams School for the Deaf will benefit from the project. Meanwhile, 250 persons with disabilities who are on the program of advancement through Health and Education Pass are soon to get training to develop their employability skills. They are among 500 individuals whose training will be facilitated under the Labor and Social Security Ministry's Social and Economic Inclusion of Persons with Disabilities Project. A contract was recently signed with seven entities to provide consultancy services for the initiative. Vocational and job skills training and certification job coaching and employment readiness training, apprenticeship and on-the-job training, and organizational strengthening. This component of the project will be executed at a cost of about 61.3 million Jamaican dollars. Total project cost is 2.9 million US dollars and it's funded by the Japanese government and the World Bank. Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaite says the administration will continue to review how mathematics is taught in schools to improve the country's performance in the subject. He says the matter of teacher qualification is one of the issues to be addressed. Some of our teachers are very, very good. But the truth is that many of our teachers do not have the basic qualifications in mathematics themselves. I say this not to embarrass anybody, but as an invitation because the Ministry of Education wants every teacher of mathematics to upgrade themselves and we will help you with the appropriate workshops and additional courses. The minister was addressing the more than 6,000 students and teachers who participated in the second staging of the ministry's National Mathematics Exposition recently. A creative video competition on the Jamaica Logistics Hub initiative is to be launched soon. Persons will be invited to produce and submit a two-minute video about the Logistics Hub. Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Anthony Hilton says the competition will cover several categories, including animation, drama, music, and spoken word. All of these initiatives are designed to engage the population at various levels as we deepen the discourse and outreach in relation to the logistics hub. And finally, media practitioners are being encouraged to play a greater role in helping government to communicate the message of labor productivity to the nation. Labor Minister Derek Kellyer says, given the importance of increasing workforce productivity to national growth, the partnership is critical. For the productivity revolution to succeed, all stakeholders must be on board. Since no single entity or organization can create and sustain the productivity movement by itself. The message of its benefits must be communicated to the Jamaican people at all levels. Minister Kelly was speaking at a recent productivity workshop for reporters held under the theme Advancing the Productivity Revolution. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching.